Hallelujah, God, we love you, we love you. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. God, we're so thankful to be in your presence tonight, Lord, hallelujah. God, we want you to have your way, Lord, your will be done tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Holy God, holy God, holy God, hallelujah, Jesus. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name. We need to continue to pray for Brother McDonald who has COVID. We need to continue to pray for Brother Quinn. Amen. We need to pray for both of them. Amen. Brother and Sister Quinn. Amen. And the uh, church family, the family of this uh, pastor uh, Comstock, Brother and Sister Comstock in Odessa. Uh, they were killed in a car uh, car crash, and uh, their kids, uh, six, four, and one, were uh, survived. We need to lift up those children in prayer. Amen. Jesus, mighty name. And if you have a need tonight by the lifting of your hand, amen. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Let's trust, let's believe God tonight. Amen. To answer, Lord Jesus, in your mighty name, you see every need, God. Lord, every situation, Lord, every hand, a spoken request, Lord, tonight in Jesus' mighty name. God, we're believing you, Lord. We trust you for it tonight. In the name of Jesus, that you would raise up, Lord, Brother McDonald, God, that you would touch Brother O'Quinn, heal him. God, meet the need, Lord, that they have tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Strengthen this crossroads church family, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we praise you. God, we thank you for doing it tonight, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's thank you, church. In Jesus' mighty name, we love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's love in church. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus' name, in Jesus' 
name. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I thank you for your love and mercy tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Oh, let's give God all the time that he needs and wants tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you, Jesus. God, I'm here to worship you, Lord. I'm here, God, to give you all the glory, all the praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's lift him up tonight. Hallelujah. Come on up in this presence here right now. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I love you, I love you, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's love in church. Hallelujah, Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, I feel his presence here right now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. If you have a need, amen, he's here to meet that need right now. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we exalt you tonight, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, Jesus. Come on, let's continue to worship him tonight. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Yes, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, I love you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
us, Jesus. Oh, let's do that right now. Hallelujah. Let's exalt him. In Jesus' name, he's worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Doesn't matter how I feel tonight, he's worthy of all my praise. Doesn't matter what I'm going through, he's worthy of all my praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on. He's worthy tonight. He's worthy tonight. Yeah. continue to worship the Lord tonight as we give. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. We pray bless us off the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
glory. Come on, let's worship the Lord right now from our hearts. My God, I love you, O Lord. Jesus, I love you. I worship you, O Lord. I magnify your name, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. He is worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all worship tonight. My God, I love you, O Lord. I magnify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we come against every binding spirit right now, Lord, uh, by the authority of the name of Jesus. Lord, loose your spirit in this house right now. My God, I give you glory. Oh, Lord, loose an anointing in this place right now. My God, I love you. Lord, I believe you, Jesus. Come on, let's magnify him. Let's thank him for it right now. My God, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, we don't need to live the devil any place at all tonight. The Bible tells us to give not place to the devil. Hallelujah. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm in the house of God. I'm going to worship him from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to give him everything I can give him. Hallelujah. Because I know tomorrow I'll be facing an enemy. Oh, you hear what I said? I know tomorrow there'll be an enemy that I'll face head on. And I want to be able to stand firm in the Holy Ghost and to let him know, amen, he cannot touch me because of the power of God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Let's give God glory right now. Let's just worship him. Lord, I love you. God, I praise you. I magnify you, O Lord. You are wonderful in this house. You are wonderful in our lives, God. We give you glory. Lord, we magnify you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. I appreciate. Amen. Though when we worship the way we should worship, how the presence of God just comes in. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But when we come to the house of God and we sit down on Him, you might have just missed the very service God had planned where He was going to do some miraculous. But because you were a little tired, just saying, seen it happen way too many times. Hallelujah. I've been in this a long time, folks. You can't surprise me with anything. You can't surprise God with anything for sure. Hallelujah. Amen. I just when I thought I couldn't be surprised, I usually am. But God is never surprised. Amen. Yes, sir. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 9. It's a short chapter, so we're going to read it all. Hallelujah. 2 Samuel chapter 9, beginning with verse 1. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? You remember Jonathan was David's good friend. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when he had called, they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness, or show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on his feet. Now, if you know the story, the backstory behind this, uh, his caretaker, his nurse, as it were, uh, they were they were leaving in a hurry, and she dropped him when he was a baby, and made him lame. And it didn't cost you nothing. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, he fell on his faith and, and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, 
and restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. There, thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But, but Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servants, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, saith the king, he shall eat at, the ta at my table as one of the king's sons. You hear that? And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. And so Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. Let's just ask the Lord to help us tonight. My God, we don't deserve it, but God, you have done great works in our lives, God. Lord, we're so grateful, Lord, in the name of Jesus for everything you've done. We're asking for that anointing right now, God, to just settle into this house, God. Lord, let the anointing of your word go forth, God, as the word goes forth. God, open the hearts and minds of the hearers tonight, God, that you can speak to us, Lord. We'll give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Want to preach just for a little while, just from this thought, adopted. Hallelujah. Adopted. Now, the Bible doesn't give us much account of Mephibosheth, just a few uh, little spots here and there that it speaks of him. And this was probably the most important thing that happened in Mephibosheth's life. Amen. And, of course, this is Jonathan's son, or Saul's grandson. Amen. And he had been lame since he was a baby. Now, I don't know how much you knew about or know about the, uh, the day and hour that they lived in. I don't know a lot about it otherwise than what history has told us. But I do understand that when a fellow was lame, when a person was lame, even in Jesus' day when he came, this is way before Jesus' time, but even when Jesus came to earth, it was still that way that if you were lame, you were just out of luck. They, you couldn't hold a job, so what your lot was in life was somebody would carry you and they would place you by a gate of the city or they would place you as, as the lame man in, in the story in Acts chapter 3. They placed him at the gate called Beautiful going into the temple. And, and we understand that to be lame in that day and hour, amen, was almost a death sentence. Amen. A person who was lame was uh, given basically the same treatment as a person that, that had uh, leprosy, except that the person that had leprosy was banned outside the city. Amen. And the person that was lame did have a little privilege in that they could set in the city. But they couldn't hold a position in the family. They, they could not hold a position, uh, amen, in anywhere in the city. There was nothing there that they could do. Amen. Of course, in this day and hour, we understand that people that are lame, uh, and, and uh, there's an old boy up here at the hospital. I uh, can't even think of his name. Now. He works at HEV part time. He's in a wheelchair, and he's all he's all disfigured, and he's a great young man. And I, I got to talking with him one day up in HEV, and then later I talked to him at the hospital when I was up there one day with some folks. And a really bright young man. He's just his body is not cooperating with the rest of him. And so he's been given a lot in life that you just have to find the best job you can find. Amen. But he made up his mind he was going to advance himself a little further than H-E-B. And, and so he went and applied at the hospital and got hired on. And now 
He's one of the people that carries you to your room and carries you here around the hospital and carries messages back and forth. And, and the thing is, in our day, it's looked at a little different. But in that day, Mephibosheth did not have a chance. In that day, amen, Mephibosheth, thank you, bro. Mephibosheth was a, a person that people would walk by and they would drop their little coins into his cup. As he sat by the gate, and uh, uh, he he was a beggar. He was known, uh, Amen, as a beggar. <laughs> and, and so, at the time of this writing here, uh, Amen, David, uh, Saul had died. Jonathan had died. Uh, a man was killed, and and now we understand that uh, David wants to honor. Amen, Saul's legacy. He wants to honor Jonathan. Uh, amen, and so. Uh, he asked uh, Ziba, is there any of Saul's household left that we can uh, honor them? And, and Ziba said, well, the only one left. Obviously, he wasn't really talked about that much or known that much because David didn't act like he really knew who he was at first. Is there anybody left of Saul's house or of his lineage that we could honor. Amen. And, and he said, yes, there is. There is uh, Saul's grandson, Mephibosheth. But he's lame on both of his feet. Now, you, I want you to understand, David did not look at the fact that he was lame. All he was looking for was somebody, amen, that he could put into a position of honor. Hallelujah. Uh, he was ready, amen, to take him off the street corner and put his feet under a king's table. Oh, yeah, come on. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost here right now. My help has arrived. Ah, uh, come on. And so what happened is, in the story I just read in your hearing, amen, we see that Mephibosheth is brought forward. And, and David said, you know what? I'm going to restore all your granddad's land back to you. Everything he had. But then he told Ziba, he said, he's lame on his feet, so therefore he can't farm it. So you and your kids and your servants are are going to farm that land for him and you're going to provide the food for him that he needs but one thing you need to understand whether you provide the food or not his feet are going to always be under the king's table hallelujah I'm looking at some folks who's lot in line hallelujah I don't know all of your backgrounds, but I do know some of your backgrounds. Hallelujah. I know that he's brought you from a mighty long ways. I know where he brought me from. Hallelujah. Amen. I was a spoiled preacher's kid, and I was on the road to hell. And God intervened and said, not today. It's not going to happen. I want you to understand there was an intervention that happened with my life. And God said, I'm tired of you being the one that deals with the beggarly elements of this world. I'm going to pull you out because I'm going to put you in a place where you're going to count for something. Can I tell you that every one of us under the sound of my voice that has received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's because God said, I need you to come out from that world. I need to pull you out of that beggarly element you were in and put you under the king's table. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. So literally what David was telling Mephibosheth is, you're not going to be on your own no more. None of you are not going to have to depend on your friends that let you down a lot of times. You're not going to have to depend on your living coming from a cup. There's not going to be days that you don't eat anymore. Every day, your, your feet are going to be under the king's table. Every day, the best food in the kingdom is going to be set before you. Oh, hallelujah. Can I tell somebody tonight, amen, that what was happening to Mephibosheth was he was being adopted. Hallelujah. He didn't belong to himself any longer. Now he belonged to King David. Now he was a child of the king. Hallelujah. And he had the same royal aspects as every other child of David had. Amen. They could come at any time and place their feet under the king's table. Can I tell you tonight, that's what God has done for you. Yeah. Oh. That's what he's done for me. Oh, we sing.
that song, he brought me out of a merry place. David said he digged me from a horrible pit. You know why David could do what he did with Mephibosheth? Because David himself had been adopted by God. God had pulled him off the side of an old farm out there somewhere where he had been keeping sheep and had made a king himself out of him. But that same God, amen, was a God that loved David as much as David loved God. Hallelujah. The king is talking to us today. Yes, sir. You see, your position has changed. Hallelujah. Woo. No, 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 no. You, you, you understand. Amen. I know where I would be today if it wasn't for God's intervention. I, I know where some of you would probably be today if there hadn't been a God that stepped into your world and woke you up and helped you to realize, hey, you're going down the wrong path. I'm going to adopt you out of your situation. I'm going to bring you full circle. Amen. You're going to come into my house. You're going to sit under my table. You're going to eat the best of the best. You're going to rejoice with the best of the best. Can I tell somebody here tonight, that is your lot in life now. No longer do you have to serve the devil and the, and the beggarly elements of this world. But you can serve God with everything that's given you. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 through 17 said, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Come on, preach. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, my. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Did you hear that? And if children, then heirs. He took a Gentile nation, a man that nobody liked. He, he, he took a Gentile world. Amen. We're not Jews by nature. We're not Jews by, by lineage. And so therefore we are in the Gentile race. But God said, I see some good out there. I just need to make some changes in their life. I need to take them from where they are now to up here where I want to place them. I've got to have those Gentiles in my kingdom. And because of that, we are adopted in. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. All right. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Yes, sir. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Now, when Paul penned these words, he wasn't just pulling something out of the air. This was the Roman church he was talking to. And so he knew the laws concerning adoption in the Roman camp. Hallelujah. There were certain laws and rules that applied. And when an emperor began to get a little age on him, Amen. Now, now you got to go back and understand. Amen. That the, the, the father of the family was complete head over you. If you were a son of that father, it didn't matter if he was king or just a pauper in the field. If you were Roman lineage, amen, you were the dad. That son under you was under you until the day you died. Even if they married and moved away, you still had to answer to your dad. That was the Roman law. But what Roman law said was that when an emperor began to get old and he didn't have an heir to the throne. Now he may have some other sons. He may not have other sons. He may just have girls. And they couldn't put a girl on the throne. And so what they would do 
is that emperor would begin to search and he would begin to look around and he would find somebody over in this household over here and he would check out their credentials and he would try to find out as much as he could about them and if they looked like a good candidate he would bring them in and he would talk to them and spend some time with them and ask them some questions and try to find out exactly who they were amen and if he wanted them or not oh but the law said that when he finally found that one particular person that he was interested in, then he would begin that process of adoption. And it was quite a lengthy process. I think they carried it over to today. Amen. It was quite a lengthy process. And what would happen was they would do this little ceremony three times and each time they would use copper coins and they would weigh the amount out from the from the uh, uh, the, the emperor to that dad that he was buying that son from or going to adopt that son from and, and he would act like he's buying it and then the dad would turn around and buy him back and they would do that two times and then the third time the emperor would pay him but the dad would refuse to pay it back and so therefore he lost his priority he was no longer the father of that son now all that power was transferred to that emperor who was looking for a new son okay, I'm coming somewhere here hang with me hang with me hallelujah and so what happened after that, well, then they would go through the, the court process, and there was a lengthy court process, just like there is today. And, and when they finally finished all of that court process, then that son would drop his surname, and he would pick up the surname of the emperor. So it doesn't matter what his first name was, he kept that in his middle name, but his surname became that of the emperor now. And so he actually became an heir. And let me tell you how it worked in the Roman in the Roman world. Amen. When that guy stepped in, it didn't make any difference how many sons that that emperor had after that son was, was brought into the family and, and adopted in. That son had all the power over the family now. As soon as that emperor died, that adopted son would take all the power, Brother West. It was no longer anybody else's power. It didn't make any difference if there were five more sons born after that one was adopted. That adopted son got the full tilt. He got the whole ball of wax. He got the fortune of the family. He got the leadership of the family. He was head of the household and soon would be head of the kingdom. Oh, can I tell somebody here tonight, amen, that that's the way God does stuff. Oh, come on, he looks at you, and he said, I need them on my side. I need them on my team. And so he goes, and he tells the devil, you can't have them anymore. I'm going to take them from you. I'm going to change their name. They're going to become who I am. Hallelujah. Oh, can I tell somebody here tonight that you were living in sin. You, Oh, come on, you were doing what you thought was right. Maybe you were living in a different church world and you were doing everything you knew to do. But can I tell you that God one day smiled on us? Yes. Oh. Thank you, Jesus, sir. And he began to say, you know what? I'm going to make you an heir. Paul knew what he's talking about. He, he was he was he was quanti quantifying this yes, with that sir. with that Roman church back then. He was letting them know I know how the adoption process works in your kingdom, but let me tell you how it works in God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Oh come on. You're gonna leave those beggarly elements behind. You're gonna walk away. Come on. But there was yet you're not gonna be a beggar anymore. No, 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 you're coming off the street. You're gonna have your feet under a king's table. And God saved the night to us. I, you, if you'll just let me, I want your feet to stay under my table. I want you to be a part of who I am. Oh, come on, hear me tonight. We need God, and God needs us in His kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells me, well, you know, that, that adopted kid, when that emperor died, became all powerful. 
the last few years that emperor had, he would train that adopted son how to be an emperor. And so when he died off the scene, it wasn't that that killed the third one down who was so sharp and smart. He, he didn't matter now. Amen. Because there had been one adopted. Oh, can I tell you? That's where it's at with us. Amen. It doesn't make any difference who's out there. But when God adopts you and brings you into his kingdom, hallelujah. Oh, come on. He said, I'm going to make you kings and priests.
He is rich beyond measure in His love to us. My God. Greater love had no man than this, that He would lay down His life for His friends. 2 Corinthians 6, 17, 18 said, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Come on, we, we, we read that scripture time after time. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Oh, but he said, no, no, no. What you don't understand is that is a part of the adoption process. It, it, it's kind of a lengthy process sometimes, but that is part of the adoption process. And that's coming out from the world. That's no longer looking like the world. That's no longer adapting to the world. That's no longer smelling like the world. That's no longer talking like the world. That's no longer being like the world. Because when you come out of the world, amen, you take on a new identity in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians 4, verse 1 said, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing but from a servant, though he be Lord of all but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father! Wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ Some people just go from one extreme to the other. They bounce around in the world so much. Hey man, I, I've seen them go, go click into this church and sign the church roll and say the sinner's prayer and do all those things and, and, and he walk right back out in the world and continue doing the same thing. Obviously you haven't become an heir. Because an heir doesn't keep on the same old nasty clothes he had. Oh We're talking spiritually here. Don't get me wrong. We're talking spiritually. Amen. But those clothes of the world were beggarly elements. Oh, do you understand that spiritual concept here? Amen. You were in the world and you were of the world. Oh, come on. The world knew you. Amen. The world partied with you. The world did whatever you wanted to do. But can I tell you that all of a sudden an adoption process began to take place? Oh, come on. You repented of your sins. You fell on an old fashioned altar and you prayed until you repented of everything you ever done wrong and then we baptize you in Jesus name under the water hallelujah you're covered by the blood oh come on hear me tonight and then all of a sudden new life began to happen you became a new creature Jesus was walking down the road one day with a bunch of folk Brother West, there was a guy by the name of Bartimaeus. Yes, sir. The Bible said he was blind. And uh, he was sitting on the side of the road. And he was begging for alms. He was just doing everything he could. He got a little living of some sort. He hasn't seen the light of day. And, and, and he's just sitting there and he hears the crowd coming and no doubt he heard people call in the name of Jesus and so he began to cry out Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me now he had on some clothes that identified him to all those around him he had never seen them he didn't know what they looked like all he knew was that when he grew up, every day, his dad would help him get dressed and lead him down to this certain spot in the village where he sat, begging alms. 
Every day it was the same old, same old. Every day the same people came by. Every day he was taunted by those hey, that would want to taunt him. Uh, maybe some came by and stole money out of his cup and he couldn't even tell that they were stealing his money. But the thing that was impressive about him was there was a garment on him that identified him with that world. Can I tell you today, the devil has some people blinded in this world. Amen. He's got them blinded. And because they're blinded, they've got on a garment. They don't even realize they've got on. They don't understand that what they're doing is wearing a garment that Satan has given them. Oh, come on. It identifies them as a beggar in this world. And they, they don't have a home. Oh, they think they've got everything. They just bought new houses and new cars and new boats and everything's looking good in their life. What they don't understand in God's eyes, all he can see is that beggarly coat that they're wearing that Satan has put on them. But one day, amen, Jesus came walking down the street and Bartimaeus began screaming, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The people around him said, be quiet, Bartimaeus. Or a man who's like me. That's like saying, see him do a dog. <laughs> so the Bible said he got a little louder. Yeah. Uh -huh. A little more boisterous. Yes, sir. Jesus. And so Jesus comes and stops in front of him and says, come to me. Now, if you read the scripture, the first thing he did, he stood up. The second thing he did was drop that coat. Come on. Woo! Hallelujah. You know why? Because he knew that in just a few moments, he was no longer going to need that thing that identified him as a beggar to the world. Oh, can I tell you, that's what he did for me. That's what he's done for you. Amen. When Barnabas walked to him, he came away seeing him. He had never seen in his life. And now he's seeing the trees. He's seeing the men. He's seeing the women. He's seeing the beautiful flowers. Everything looks different now. Can I tell you that's the way it is? When God adopts you. You no longer carry that coat that Satan had draped over you. Ooh, hallelujah. But now, oh, come on. I'm a king's kid. I've been adopted by the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. He paid it for me on Calvary. And because he paid it, I can live it. Hallelujah. And because he loves me, I can live it. And because he separated me from the world, I can live it. <coughs> Hallelujah. So therefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. Yes. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Titus chapter 3, verse 4 said, But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior towards men appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regenera regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, this is not the end of it all. When I'm laying in a hospital room or a nursing home or wherever, and I take my last breath, can I tell you, that's not the end. That's just the beginning. Hallelujah. All that we're doing down here, the only reason we spend that 70 plus years down here, amen, is to get acquainted with God and to make it right with Him and to become an heir to part of His kingdom. But you see, many folks never get to that point. 
the devil keeps them blinded. And they keep wearing that garment. They never get rid of it. And so the time comes for them to take their last breath. And many of them are expecting that when they take that last breath, they're going to see flowers and gold and, and all this stuff. They're going to see a river of life. They're going to see Jesus on the throne. They're going to see all these things. But it ain't going to happen that way. Because they put their trust in this world and its goods. Can I tell you, you know, I, I've been in construction for years and I've rebuilt a lot of homes, older homes. I've, I've been in, in the remodeling business for quite some time. Can I tell you that if a house is not lived in, now, I don't know what it is about it. You don't even have to paint the house. But as long as you're living in there, that house will be in good shape. But then you move out and move across town to another house or whatever. Or you maybe die off the scene or whatever. But that house, if nobody moves into it, will begin to decay and crumble. I can't explain that. I'm, I, like I said, I've been a builder for a long time. I cannot explain that. All I know is if there's no life there, it just begins to crumble down. Amen. And, and, and it's kind of like that to us. Amen. We, we, we go and we live for the world and we do our thing in the world and we, we never think about God. We never connect with Him. We never make the connection. And we are left behind. Amen. When the trumpet of God sounds and you're left here, you're not going to want to be in this world anymore. You think it's bad now. You wait a few months or a couple of years or whatever down the road. It's going to get severe. Amen. It's going to get so you don't want to be a part of this world. But right in the middle of it all, there's coming and a trumpet sound. Hallelujah. And you're going to look around and some people that you've known are not going to be here any longer. Amen. You, you, you may be riding the bus with somebody and the trumpet sounds and all of a sudden they were there a second ago but now they're not there. You may be in a store shopping with one of your friends and all of a sudden when that trumpet sounds they're no longer beside you. Come on, it's going to be a bad day for you. Amen. When you realize what has happened that the rapture has taken place and you've been left behind because you depended upon the bigger the elements of this world. This world will leave you aching and hurting. It will leave you depraved. It will mess with you. But can I tell you that there's a God that loves you so much that He's willing to take a chance on you. Come on, hear me tonight. I said He's willing to take a chance on you. Oh, all you've got to do is fall in an old-fashioned altar and repent of your sin and be willing to do whatever God tells you to do. Amen. When you get up from that altar, we'll baptize you in Jesus' name and you'll come out of that water. Amen. I'm not going to say you're going to get the Holy Ghost instantaneously because some people just have trouble understanding it. But can I tell you, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. That is the promise. You know what you're being done. You know what's being done. You're being adopted into the family of God. You're being adopted out of this world. Amen. This world won't have a hold of you anymore. But now you're a child of the King. Hallelujah. Woo. You see, in God's kingdom, adoption is the best thing that can happen to you. Hallelujah. You know, we, we're not, literally, we're not God's kids before then. We're Gentiles. God's kids are the Jews. I'm telling you like it is. But you know what? He said, I kind of sort of 
What those Gentile folks? You know, when they really fall in love with me, they fall in love with me. When they really fall in love with me, they are willing to let go of that world. Woo! They're willing to turn away from that world and start walking towards me. They're willing to make the change. And can I tell you that God will tell you, and I'm willing to make the difference. Hallelujah. When you're ready to make the change, God's ready to be the difference. Hallelujah. My God. You know what he is? He's the difference between death and life. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. This is life. He said, I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. Hallelujah. My God. Let's stand. But adoption is an option. Hallelujah. Come on, you're an old Gentile, you stinking fleshly thing. Come on. Oh, carnality always rising up. Come on. I always want to tell somebody off or do something stupid. No, 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 no. Do you not understand? God is wanting to adopt you. God is saying, you know what? I, I, you need to come out of that beggarly element from that world and come and live with me. You need to put your feet under a king's table for a while. It will change the way you look at life. I can promise you that everything that used to be so dark and the realms of the spirit world that used to caught me, amen, when I was a teenager. Once I received the gift of the Holy Ghost, they still come around. You know what? They still come around even today. But you know what? I don't even pay them any attention anymore. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. You know, when you got the power of God, you're a king's kid. You don't have to worry about all that mess. It comes at you, but you just keep on going. You just keep praying. You just keep worshiping. Amen. You just keep following the king. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's something about following the king. Oh, uh, come on. Especially if you're adopted. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, can you imagine that king's kid uh, that's been adopted walking behind him in a procession uh, and there's some of his schoolmates he used to go to school with uh, some of the same kind of kids he was uh, they're all dirty in the world uh, they look like a, a bad bunch uh, and he walks by them with them kingly robes on uh, and he looks at them and he smiles uh, and he, he waves at them uh, and, and they're thinking oh my how did he get to be a king's kid I'll tell you how he was adopted he didn't deserve it. He didn't belong there. But the king loved him and adopted him. I don't deserve to be here tonight. I don't deserve to be one preaching this message. But you know what? The king adopted me. And because he adopted me, he changed my whole world. He la la ba ka ya shaka ka la 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 ba ha. Come on, let's just find us a place. Let's just praise Him. Let's just worship Him a while. Let's just thank Him right now for His adoption. Thank you, Lord, for adopting me, God. Lord, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve your love. I don't deserve your love. But God, I thank you for it. Thank you for bringing me out. You brought me out of the, of the miry clay. You brought me out of the dirt of this world. Jesus, for loving me enough. You looked at me. You probably thought, what a scoundrel. But you still went ahead and adopted me anyway because you saw something on the inside of me. Jesus. And you loved me with an unfaltering and failing love. Hallelujah. A love that I don't deserve to this day. He loved me now. <laughs> Can we just praise His name? Can we love Him? Can we worship Him? <laughs> God, I love you. I don't deserve your love, but I thank you for it, God. God, I don't deserve you. God, I know where I came from. Lord, I know what I was going to be. If you hadn't have intervened in my life, 
Thank you for saving me from myself. Thank you for saving me from this world, God. I give you glory and honor and praise tonight, God. I love you and I worship you. Come on, that's it. Just praise you. Just thank you for saving you out of this world. Thank you for lifting me up, God. Thank you for making me a king's kid. Thank you, Lord, for loving me when I didn't deserve to be loved. All the way till Mephibosheth took his last breath. Even when King David had already passed off the scene, Mephibosheth's feet stayed under the king's table till he died. Hallelujah. Because the king had promised him. Woo, hallelujah. Can I tell you, amen, that's powerful tonight. But can I tell you that God made you a promise? Come on, if you'll live for me, I'm going to go build you a mansion. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. I don't want that. I don't care about the mansion. I don't even care about streets of gold. I've never seen that much gold in one place. But I could care less about it. I don't care anything about walls of Jasper. The only thing that I want to see is that one that loved me enough to adopt. Come on, that's it. Worship him right now, my God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Lord, I give you glory and honor and praise. I don't deserve your love. And I'm so grateful that you love me anyway. Lord, I don't deserve your love. But I'm so thankful that you still love me. Jesus, I love you with all of my heart. I love you with everything that's within me. Okay. 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 My God. Oh, Jesus, I love you, My God, you brought me a mighty long ways, God. Lord, and I thank you for your presence, oh God. Give me glory. Come on, I'll give you an honor. Brother Robin, you'll play some music. Let's just worship the Lord. Come on, just worship Him. Let Him know how grateful you are. Let Him know how grateful you are that He has saved you. That He's brought you out. That He's set you free. That He's adopted you into the family of God.
give you glory. Jesus, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. service Tuesday night. Amen. We will have service here uh, as normal again. Amen. On Tuesday night at 7.30. Amen. Everybody say 7.30. Alright, y'all got that. Okay. So don't show up at 7 or 6 or 5 or second service. Show up for prayer at that time. That's okay. Amen. You want to come pray an hour ahead of time? That's good. Amen. It'll do you good. Amen. God bless you.